Believe it or not, we are still in Stillwater, Oklahoma. And in fact, we are in Nate Priest's home landscape here in Stillwater. Uh, if you're familiar with the area, you probably have seen his handiwork with Yucca Point Landscape Company. And Nate, you have a very unique style, right? It yeah. definitely has more of that Southwest desert look, but yet right. we still have turf grass too. Tell yeah. us a little bit about kind of your background and in getting into this style. Well, um, of course, I started out with the tree service about 23 years ago, and just uh, as a hobby, um, I was into reptiles and was taking trips to the southwest and really fell in love with uh, desert plants, and I wondered if any of them were cold hardy, and I started to experiment with those um, at my first house that I owned, not knowing what I was doing and, <laughs> and uh, figuring out what would work. and it kind of worked better than expected and, and uh, it's just kind of evolved from there. It looks like uh, you found a few that are cold hardy. Right, right. Because right. most of these, they're, they're perennials, right? They're all yes. perennials for the yes. most part? Yes, that's right. Okay, so yeah. it's not our traditional Oklahoma landscape plants that we right. typically see. Right. Um, tell us a little bit about some of the plants that we have here behind us, if you don't mind. Well, the biggest ones are, uh, the big one in the back corner, there's Yucca Faxoniana, that uh -huh. great big one back there. And this one behind here is Yucca rostrata. Okay. Um, it's become a really popular landscape plant throughout much of the United States because of its cold hardiness. And it, it kind of has, it gives the effect of a palm tree without the, the lack of hardiness of most palm species. Um, it's really a diverse, a versatile plant for a okay. lot of different areas. It can tolerate pretty high rainfall, but obviously pretty low rainfall. And it, it's native to far west Texas. So in its native environment, it's probably getting about 14 inches of rain a year or less. And, uh, but it, it does well and I, I mound the stuff, I build the stuff up in berms of cactus blend soil. Um, rostrata, it, the yucca rostrata can kind of go straight into the ground here, but it's always better to get a sandy, gritty uh, mixture. And I've experimented with that and come up with that with our own recipe over the years. So we and, usually have the Oklahoma clay soil. Right. So you've kind of amended that a little exactly. bit, get some more exactly. aggregate. Right. And then of course the slope helps with the drainage as well. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And I've noticed too that it's not just, you know, the yuccas and some of those that we maybe think are unique, but you've got a lot of actual plants that we see in everyday gardens as well. The right. gallardias, the salvias. Right. but they're just kind of tied in with that more drought tolerant, succulent look to it. Exactly, yeah, we're always looking for uh, flowering perennials that do well in a rock garden environment with little to no uh, supplementary irrigation. Uh -huh. um, like Dianthus Neon Star um, is one that you'll see a lot of around here because um, not only does, is it drought tolerant and really unfussy um, and requires almost no maintenance, but it also stays in a nice little clump rather than getting large and expansive like some of the other species that cover up their neighbors and get kind of crazy and require more maintenance. Uh, so we're always looking for uh, ways to add color and uh, and diversity for pollinators and just for colors and all, all that, you know. Uh, so, well, and yeah. the, you've got the red yuccas that I know the hummingbirds right. love, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so there's yeah. definitely, we've seen butterflies and moths and all sorts of, but you have another sort of uh, creature that likes your garden a little bit. Tell us a little bit about the lizard you have. <laughs> okay. Well, I've got several species of lizards here. Probably the most prominent is the east, eastern collared lizard, uh, which is Oklahoma state reptile. And they're a rock dwelling lizard. So they do really well here and they're fun to have around. Okay. And then there's the, a bunch of native species like skinks um, and uh, six lined race runners. Um, and oh, what else we got? Some whiptail species and stuff like that, that that do well here too. So you've so. kind of created a haven for them here in the neighborhood, yeah. haven't you? Yeah, exactly. Well, and I, I think it's interesting because a lot of people are like, how did you go from what is a traditional landscape to something like this? Can you right. tell us a little bit about maybe what that process is if somebody comes to you and says, how yeah. do I even start converting? <laughs> right, well, uh, some people have had us do their entire yard uh, like this. But most of our clients just start with a small bed, like maybe across the front of the house. Um, of course, south or south facing is ideal for mm -hmm. these sun loving, drought tolerant plants. East and west works fine too. North side's a little bit more challenging. We have to use some different species up close to the house since they'll be shaded all winter. But we, a lot of the time we'll just put in a nice, you know, feature bed uh, along the front of someone's house and maybe taper it up along the sidewalk. And that might be all they want, or they might have a speck to expand from there until the whole yard right. winds up a rock garden. Or they might want to keep areas of turf for pets or kids to play on. And just to have the, the diversity of some 
some rock garden, some turf. Well, so. and, and speaking of rocks, you've got a lot of rock around here. Tell yeah. us a little bit about how um, important those rocks are into that landscape and the microclimates too. Yeah, so the rocks uh, absorb a lot of heat from the sun, which they can slowly release at night, which helps keep the plants a little warmer at night. Um, I also try to use big rocks on the north side of the plants so that in the winter time, they not only block the north wind when we get north cold north yeah. winds, um, but they so the, the plants on the south side is protected from the north wind a little bit, and meanwhile they're also absorbing the south sun. Um, so they're really important, and they they make a good barrier with which to build up a mound. Okay. So if you have um, a walkway or something, you might want to use a row of boulders and then slope the whole thing to the south, and those boulders prevent you from having to have a gently tapering mound on the north okay, side. So they kind of hold all that aggregate exactly. and soil back up. Yeah. Well, exactly. and I noticed too, you know, a lot of times we think like something like this means you can't have a lawn, but we are in fact standing on a lawn area also. So right. it can be incorporated. Right, um, absolutely. And water. You know, right. having that water in something that seems like a little more arid is yeah. a nice uh, kind of a yeah. mental break, right? A yeah. Relaxing sound of water. Well, they, it's really nice to have water um, to kind of enhance the ambiance and also provide a contrast to the otherwise dry landscape. And then it, they really, uh, the wildlife really benefits from having them as well. Yeah. Um, this one behind us, the honeybees really like to visit. I think because of the way the water bubbles over the rock, um, it's easier for the honeybees to to drink water apparently from that than just from a from a pool because I notice you use this one a lot more. Okay. So. Well, I I can only imagine if this is what your front yard looks like. Do you mind if we go take a look at the backyard? Not at all. Let's go take a look. Okay, great. This is amazing. I love this kind thanks. of stadium of cactus and succulents you've got here. Well, thanks. So, I mean, obviously we're on the north side of your house. Right. Is that help with them getting more sun? That's exactly right. So the north side, uh, as, I, as I was saying earlier, can be a little challenging for growing these plants. So I just, on the north side of my house, I decided to do patio space up close to the house uh -huh. and put some of the utility type stuff up there and then the part of the the part of the yard where the sun does hit, even in like around the winter solstice, uh -huh. when the sun's at the lowest angle in the south, um, I wanted to use that part of the yard for these plants. Okay. And to even maximize the potential more, uh, we built this uh, retaining wall uh, that's south facing, so it's like it functions like a south facing slope. Right. And it also allows you to see the plants really well, but it definitely heats them up and gives them the maximum warmth in the wintertime. So, so you watched where that sun actually came over your roof and that's where you started your retaining wall? Or? That's exactly right. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So you're really capturing all of that sun um, and it, it's just prettier than seeing a, a fence, right? In your backyard. Right. <laughs> yep, so, for sure. Also, I would imagine it helps with that drainage factor too. Oh right? yeah, for sure. They okay. definitely get excellent drainage. And we've used some big, some desert willows that have really just grown tremendously these these desert willows in here were put in 30 gallon pots like two and a half years ago and they're already like 12 to 14 feet tall so and it looks like we just missed the flowering display we just missed on the flowering. those unfortunately yeah. but again a yeah. nice showy kind of feature right um, in the summertime right and i love yeah. how i mean even in this sort of uh uh, landscape, you've still incorporated all those things that you need um, for your backyard, such as a pool, right? We all need a pool in our yeah. backyard. Tell yeah. us a little bit about how you've incorporated that design in and around your pool. Well, I wanted to tie the landscape in with it. So around the pool, I've got some succulent gardens that are limestone planters that w the uh, pool people just plastered right in around the pool. And then around the water slide, we incorporated rock and along the sides of the house, I left room, instead of just having concrete, I left enough space to have some landscape beds in there, so it kind of tie the whole thing together. Well, Nate, I even like how you've added the rock up against the house to kind of tie in that vertical element with the rock as well. You've done a fantastic job out here. Thank you for sharing your home landscape with us. You're welcome. Thanks, I enjoyed having you. We hope you enjoyed this video as part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on the OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.